Okay, so question 12, I reckon, isn't going to be quite as nasty as you thought. Um, it's just a matter of just going with the flow here, and let's see what actually happens. So, we've got to find out what fx is equal to, and we're told that it's going to be equal to negative g times 2 brackets x plus 1 plus the 1. Here's one way of doing it. Since we know that gx is equal to square root x, that means negative g times 2x plus 1 plus the 1 can be written as, watch what happens. We're going to put a minus in front of our square root. We're going to replace the x with all of that, 2x plus 1. And at the end, we're going to put a plus 1. And that is what fx is equal to. Now, I put it to you that that's actually a fairly easy way of doing it. I don't know about you, but I would guarantee that it's pretty easy. Now, full stop, we're finished. But let's have a look at another way of doing it, which is a more complicated way. So we had the expression there, and we had the plus 1. So here's another way of thinking of it. Well, I kind of hope you skipped to this slide because I was just about to show you this other way and all of a sudden something crazy happened. So anyway, here's what's going to happen. So we've got this minus g outside of 2x plus 1 plus the 1. Let's consider what each of these does. Well, that causes a reflection in the x-axis. That causes dilation factor half from y. That causes translation of one unit in the positive, beg your pardon, negative x direction, direction there, and that causes translation of one unit up or in the positive y direction. So if we're going to be doing this with matrices, here's what we can do. We can understand that if it's going to be in matrix form, we've got x dash y dash is equal to transformation matrix there times x, y plus the translation matrix at the end. Now, let's see what we know. We know that we're doing this reflection in the x-axis, so that means we've got a minus over here wherever the y was going to be. We've got a dilation of a half from y. That means we're going to put a half up here. That's going to be 0. No other dilations. That's going to be minus 1 and 0 like so. In terms of the translations, that was a translation of 1 in the negative x direction. That's going to become minus 1 there. The plus 1 was going to be the translation of 1 in the positive y direction. And that's what it's going to look like using matrices. OK, remember how I mentioned there was another way of doing it? Let's have a look and see how you might do it on your CAS calculator. So on your CAS calculator, you would use the define function. So how about we do this? We do define and we do gx is equal to square root x. What you would do in the next line is you would just write in negative g 2x plus 1 plus 1, press enter, and you would find that the calculator automatically gives you the correct answer, which is just going to be negative square root 2x plus 1 plus the 1 at the end. It may even show off and expand the brackets and make that 2x plus 2 plus 1. Either way, that one's correct and that one's correct. Up to you to decide which one you think is the prettiest.